with reporting from around the world. It's time for Eye on Travel with America's number one frontline travel news journalist, Peter Greenberg. And now, the man who travels over 400,000 miles each year, Peter Greenberg. And of course, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm not traveling 400,000 miles this year, but I did travel to do this show for the first time in, in months. If you're just joining us, let me tell you where we are. You can really get out your maps this time. 27 degrees, 29 minutes north, 82 degrees, 34 minutes west. We're in Bradenton, Florida, coming to you from the Compass Hotel, brand new hotel in Anna Maria Sound. And of course, you can always reach me at peter at petergreenberg.com with your name, phone number, question or problem. We will solve it right here on the air every week. Uh, what a relief it was to actually get to an airport, get on a plane, get in the air. I mean, for me, who normally travels two to three days a week, not having traveled in more than five months was uh, a little intense. Uh, obviously, wearing my mask, obviously practicing all the protocols. Um, and you know what? You should, too. And hopefully it'll all work out as America slowly begins to hopefully intelligently open up or in some cases reopen up. Part about that intelligence is how we do it. And in the, in the hospitality industry, whether you're a restaurant, a hotel, an airline, an airport, any place where there are large, you know, social gatherings, a meetings and convention center, a ballroom, you know, a bar, uh, there are new protocols. And it is not a, a surprise to realize that Americans want a guarantee. They want to know that there's a security blanket there for them, especially in lieu of a vaccine or therapeutics. And joining me now is the Senior Vice President of Research, Development, and Engineering for Global Institutional and Specialty Groups. And I'm not going to repeat that title because it just cost me too much time. His name is Dr. Andy Cooper with Ecolab. How are you, sir? I'm great, Peter. Thank you. I mean, the bottom line is it's not enough anymore just to do an overnight cleaning of anything, right? I mean, I mean, in New York, where I live, and have been for the last five months, they shut down the entire subway system at night now, and for the first time in the history of the subway system, they disinfected every night. I'm sure you guys have been busy in that department. We certainly have, and people really need to expect, and we're dedicated to delivering, as many others are, an elevated standard for hygiene that is really required to revitalize the travel industry and uh, to bring people back in a way where they have confidence and comfort to eat, sleep, travel, fly out. I'm an intense traveler myself, and uh, I can't wait for the day when people's comfort level enable them to get back to business. So that's, that's what we're doing. And it requires a whole new vocabulary, a whole new set of practices that I'd love to share more about. Well, bottom line is, you know, certain things are sort of obvious, right? Food service. Uh, you know, buffets on cruise ships or, or Sunday brunches at restaurants. That has to be redefined. Uh, floor plans have to be redesigned uh, for social distancing and everything else. Uh, and then, of course, there are, by definition, places that are large social gatherings in confined spaces. That creates a, a bigger challenge for you guys in terms of what kind of chemicals are you using, what kind of hospital-grade disinfectants are you using, and what can you tell the public or what can your customers tell the public to, to ease their concerns about even showing up? Well, you're exactly right, of course. And there's so many guidelines out there. It's I read them for a living. But between the Centers for Disease Control Prevention, the World Health Organization, countries, states, counties, it can really get confusing. But if you distill it down, really, I mean, we have... Uh, over a thousand scientists who work on developing these programs and it really comes down to creating that clean environment so it's more than just products um, there's lots of things that kill viruses and pathogenic bacteria but they really have to be used in a specific way as part of a program in a protocol that has to be checked with training and verification and then people really need to see and believe clean that has to be visible. They have to see the hospital grade disinfectant. They have to see the seal in order to gain, regain confidence that that's a safe place for them, their partners and their families 
to be. And, and that's really, everybody's become a microbiologist and it's fascinating to me. I love it because it's been dinner conversation. My wife has a public <laughs> master's degree in public health and it's something we talk about. So it's never how we would want the world to become aware of it. But um, people's inquiries and interest in it and the expectation that they have is, has really uh, been amazing. All right. So let me ask stupid question number one. Okay. I get what, what hotels have to do in your room with housekeeping and, and, and many of the hotels, of course, have partnered with major clinics like the Mayo Clinic and Johns Hopkins and, and the Cleveland Clinic to come up with those protocols about not only what they do in the room, but also what they won't do in the room or how often they will enter the room. But let's talk about a more public example, just a men's room or a woman's room. Uh, if I go to, and I use the men's room, does that mean the, 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 the institution that has that men's room is going to come in after me and completely disinfect it? right after everybody uses it? Well, of course, they can't or they don't at the frequency that we would oftentimes wish. But of course, we have to deal with the environment that we have, not the one that we wish we had. And so there are practices and protocols that we can all take, right? You mentioned one at the beginning with regard to mask wearing, certainly touching your hands uh, to your face or to your nose and eyes. Um, but beyond that, really, it's a matter of making sure that when we do the cleaning and disinfection at an increased frequency, that the training and the protocol is correct. Because the best product, this isn't about the chemistry, it can be, or the product, but the, those products improperly used don't get the right results. And so people want confidence that when they're in that men's room and it has been disinfected it was first cleaned, for example, because you can't disinfect a dirty surface, that the contact time that that product had, it wasn't just wiped over the surface in a feel good, um, but it was actually applied in a manner that's going to get the appropriate kill. And so that while it may not be as frequent as every guest, that when it is done, it is done properly, and that can have a sustained and measurable impact in, in people's health. It also results in, a, in an environment that looks better. It provides comfort that indeed that area has been cleaned. And so you can use it with confidence. I have, a, I have an idea, Dr. Cooper. I'm going to rename the men's room the appropriate kill. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure how conducive that will be. That would be an interesting experience. We, we call it science certified. And you can go to sciencecertified.com and see more. But maybe that will resonate better than, than referring to kill. We'll see. Yes. Would you like to visit our appropriate kill men's room, Mr. Greenberg? Of course I would. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, that's good. And so really, and even the vocabulary, right? You mentioned we joke around killing, but it's an appropriate term. But even yeah. just the terms cleaning versus sanitizing versus disinfecting can get, uh, can get confusing. You got to clean it. Sanitizing, we talk about for food service and food safety, field illness prevention, but to get the viruses, you got to get to a uh, disinfection exactly. and even a hospital grade disinfection. I got you, Dr. Andy Cooper from EcoLab. Thanks for the uh, for the lexicon and thanks for all the hard work. And I'll let you know when I rename the bathroom the appropriate kill. Coming up next, the little airport that does right here in Sarasota and Bradenton. We'll talk to their CEO right after this.